From the world of sports and the world of cricket, less than 24 hours to go for the WTC final in London. The Indian team will need a perfect blend of skills and temperament when they take on an equally strong Australia in the World Test Championship final to be played at the Oval. India has consistently performed well in the last two WTC cycle years, demonstrating their superiority in the game's longest format. But winning an ICC trophy requires more than just that. India have come close to winning major white ball tournaments in the past decade, reaching the knockout stages but falling short of claiming the trophy. In fact, let's take a look at the record of the Indian team in ICC finals. So the big one, of course, was the 1983 World Cup, the first time India won a big ICC trophy. After that, though, we lost three finals in Champions Trophy and ODI World Cup in 2003. And what a crushing defeat that was in the 2003 World Cup final versus Australia. Then came what can be called the golden period for India. Under MS Dhoni, India won the T20 World Cup, the ODI World Cup and the Champions Trophy, completing a hat-trick of big titles. But that was 10 years ago. Now, not only has India not made too many finals since then, they've also not managed to win a big trophy, losing the T20 World Cup final in 2014, 2017 Champions Trophy to Pakistan, and then the inaugural World Test Championship final in 2021. Can they do it this time around is the big question. And naturally, that's the question being thrown to the team captain and coach repeatedly. This is what they have to say. No, look, we know what we have won and what we have won. No one has no meaning to think about it every time. Last year, when we were in Australia, at the time of T20 World Cup, we had the question again. And I had the question again, that we don't know all of the players, that India has won, when they have won, when they have won. तो उसके बार उसके उसके बारे में बार बार सोचना I don't think जायज है you have to focus on कि अभी क्या सिचुएशन है कैसे हम अच्छा कर सकते तो सारे प्लेयर्स कोचिंग स्टाफ का पूरा ध्यान इसी चीज में है कि हम इस मैच में कैसे अच्छा कर सकते और जीत सकते no, not at all. I mean, we don't feel any pressure in terms of, uh, you know, um, trying to uh, win an ICC trophy. Of course, it would be nice to do it. It would be certainly nice to be able to win an ICC tournament. But um, also in the context of things, you know, you look at this and, and you see um, this is the culmination of two years of work. Uh, it's a culmination of uh, a lot of success that gets you here. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of positives to take from that, to see where you stand on the table, you know, winning series in Australia, drawing series here, being very competitive everywhere that this team has played in the world over the last five or six years. Uh, you know, I, I think those are things that will never change just because you have or you don't have an ICC trophy. Uh, you know, that's really the bigger picture. So both the captain and the coach there, underplaying or downplaying the expectations of winning the ICC trophy. Is that the right thing to do really? I'm going to take that question to our guests also joining us in just a bit. The big question is of course, can India end the ICC title drought? Something that has been running for 10 years now. First game of the season happening on this ground. Uh, we are quite aware of what the conditions are, um, what is going to happen in the next five days. It's really important. I think the um, the, the World Test Championship now, uh, having the two best teams play in a final, I think is great. Let me go across to Ayaz Memon, commentator and sports writer, joining us. Some of our other guests will also be with us in just a bit. Ayaz, you know, my first question is, you heard what both Rohit Sharma and Rahul Dravid said about the pressure of winning an ICC trophy. Particularly what Rahul Dravid said, he almost seemed to suggest that, you know, it doesn't really matter whether you win titles alone, your journey is equally important. Is that a right statement to make? Is our titles not important anymore? 
No, I think they are. I mean, it's a philosophical way of looking at things. I think what Rahul Ravid was mentioning is that from a player's perspective, you know, when you play so many matches and so many tournaments, you know, there might be some you win and some you lose. But obviously, the urge and the desire to win tournaments and titles has to be very strong. Otherwise, you might... You know, the, the more kind of philosophical aspect or philosophical way of looking at it, and the more you know, urgent issue on hand is that you are there in the final. This is a final where there are only two teams and then, you know, you've been there the last time you lost. Can you win it this time or not? Okay. Ayaz, I'm facing some issue with your line. Let me try and see if we can uh, improve that a little bit. Uh, but uh, let me also go across to group sports editor K. Shrinivas Rao, who's actually joining us from London. Uh, Shrini, you've been keeping a very close watch on the net sessions, the pitch and the weather. It looks like it's going to be sunnier than what it was in Southampton a couple of years ago. Give us the latest of what you, uh, you know, what is looking like, the conditions. The closer I look at the conditions, uh, the con more confusion, uh, confusion, confusing it gets for me. Right. Uh, so I'll tell you why. Because the sun came out yesterday, it came out in the later, latter half of the day. When the sun came out, everything looked perfectly normal. But it's when the sun is not out is when your mind starts to work. Like right now, for instance, hmm. yesterday by this time the sun had come out. Today it's it's gloomy and it's overcast. Hmm. There is no prediction for rain. There's hmm. going to be no rain, which is which is a, a great thing. But the sun is not out. So, for example, for instance, tomorrow if probably India were to bat first hmm. and we would have these conditions uh, overhead, then I'm not very sure what kind of threat would a bowlers like Cummins and Stark pose. Hmm. So give me a sense of, uh, you know, what the pitch is looking like, particularly, I think Rohit Sharma has already indicated they would like a look tomorrow as well as any team would. He wasn't going to reveal too much about what the playing 11 is going to be. But what's your reading from the pitch, the well, conditions and also the net sessions? Well, right now, as I'm speaking with you, I can take a look at the pitch. And uh, yes, there is definitely a tinge of green. Hmm. I'm not going to say that this is like some kind of a green carpet or something, but there's hmm. a slight tinge of green. And uh, yes, so you will have bounce on this wicket. Seamers will play on the ro a role on this wicket. Traditionally, although what Rohit also said in the press conference is so true that traditionally, you know, oval tends to like get easier once play begins. Mm. It's only the start, but once play begins, oval tends to get easier. The same track, what it is beginning to appear right now, which is, a, you know, a slightly greenish tinge on it, uh, looking to us the seamers, probably on day two could like, look different with some more role to play for spinners. So, you know, to predict an 11 right now would be next to impossible. And I think the only way we have to wait and watch is what Rohit Sharma and Rahul Dravid decide tomorrow morning. Okay, Deep Das Gupta, former India cricketer, is also joining us. But before I go to him, Srini, I have one more question, which I began with Ayaz as well. Now, some of these noises that the captain and the coach are making, and I was in Australia, uh, you know, the tournament, the T20 World Cup that Rohit Sharma talked about, that, you know, we were asked this question then too, when are we winning our next ICC trophy? But it, I almost get this sense that they're irritated with the media for asking this question, but this is a natural question to ask. And it almost seems like, oh, don't focus on the titles, we are on this journey, and, you know, we are looking for personal improvement. It doesn't work like that in competitive sport. You have to win I titles. I completely agree. I completely agree with you. I completely agree. At best, if they are uh, not answering, they are only avoiding. They are trying to hedge. They are trying to uh, avoid saying what is the most obvious thing. Why are you here? Why have you qualified for the yeah. final? Why was this final so important to you? Obviously, because you know that there is value to winning a title. And that title comes with its share of responsibility. So, you know, I, I can imagine why they are running away from it. Because... Yes, the fact remains that it's been the longest time since India has laid its hands on an ICC trophy and that's bound to be eating them. Whether they answered it to us or not, this is the rule. The, I mean, the, there's no running away from it when they're inside the dressing room. Yeah, one, I, one aspect could be deep that, you know, you want to downplay some of the build-up and you don't yeah. want to add the pressure on your players. But I think, the, yeah. I think it was Rahul only who said that, you know, the build-up has been less frenzied, so that in itself helps them. But I don't know, yeah. uh, it's not nice to hear that the coach is saying, you know, look at our two years of work. I mean, we want you to, that work to culminate into ICC <laughs> trophies. It's not unheard yeah. of. Yeah, Shivani, yeah. I think that stands good for some of the other teams. But when you're talking about India, you're yeah. expected to win games because it's, it's a champion team. Uh, you're expected to win trophies. 
So it's it's not a mid-table team. Uh, it is one of the top teams in the world, and it has consistently been one of the top teams in the world. So from the top teams, obviously, your your expectations would be a lot more. It's not just about reaching semi-final or final, but actually trophies. Yeah. And that's what champion teams are all about: winning trophies. I, uh, I, so yes, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not sure it's okay if the coach or the captain said that you know we want to big win big titles and I think Rohit has right. said that it's just that it's got yeah. it's been so long that he doesn't want to sound it, like true. a broken record. True and and obviously this this question will be asked over and over again till the time India does go on and win an ICC trophy. Yeah. So uh, that 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 stays. But from I I do understand from a captain, from a player, from a coach's perspective, where you do want to downplay a big game because you want to treat it as any other game. So you would definitely would want to downplay it. But the other important thing that might actually help uh, uh, India and you mentioned it, Rahul did uh, talk about it as well. Because to a great extent, this has been looked as uh, not the main event of the summer. Obviously, yeah. the main event of the summer is the Ashes. So there is this huge hype about the Ashes, which is understandable in this country. Mm. Uh, so somehow, even yesterday, I was talking to an uh, Australian journalist, and they're kind of looking at WTC as a kind of a warm-up to the Ashes. Yeah. No, no, also, know, uh, also, that may be true for Australia. But Deep, I think for us also, yeah. the bigger event is coming in October. That's why the build-up to the WTC has been a little bit less because this is a World Cup year. Yeah. If it hadn't been a World yeah, Cup year, yeah. this would have been much, much bigger. And of course, it's coming right on the heels of the IPL. But actually, Deep, I forgot to mention, Deep is also in England and he's also working yeah. and commentating on the match. So good to have him on the show. I asked you, wanted to come in? Yes. So, Kiwan, just to tell you, I, even I am in England. Oh, you are also, also in England. I highlight that, you know, why am I not the in England? final, in my opinion. Why don't all three of you pull some money? England, yes. Why don't all three of you <laughs> and, pull you know, some I, money I mean, and get I, me I, to England? So that we can all do the show there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that would be great. But just to kind of re reiterate, I think the, the, the idea of the WTC final hmm. was to have the, uh, the, the avowed objective was to propagate hmm. the value of test cricket. So, hmm. I don't think that anybody... Certainly not the ICC, neither the two teams, the Australian Cricket Ball or the BCCI, can afford to downplay or should downplay the yeah. WTC final. You may be having the World Cup later and there will be the Ashes following this, but I'm afraid they are not bigger than the WTC final where I'm concerned. Absolutely. You know, you might downplay it just to not put pressure on your players. But for God's sake, I think that I don't think this the Indian team or the Australian team will take this, this, uh, this the field tomorrow and say, oh, it doesn't matter if we lose. I think they'll I be think hurt as hell the Australians if they lose this match. Even more hurt, hurt than whatever happens in the Ashes subsequently or the World Cup. No, no, I don't think an Australian team will ever be hurt saying before the uh, before a big championship match like this that you know big titles don't matter. Look at our journey for two years. I'm sorry, that will just not happen. And it's I I don't think it's okay to say that. Shivani. Yeah, okay. I have to discuss some other things, but I think this is creating a lot of furor in our own panel. Yes, Srini, you wanted to come in very quickly. Shiva yes, yes, Shivani. Uh, I completely agree uh, to, uh, to a large extent with what Deep said. Uh, you know, the whole build-up and the noise around Ashes. You asked me, is it irritating when, you know, it sounds like a broken record uh, and uh, people tend to shy away from answering the important question, which is, you know, that there is a title to be won here and, and nobody wants to put a head, put its foot down and like kind of uh, say something about it. The flip side to that is equally irritating is what, how England and Australia try to build up Ashes even in the middle of being in the middle of a tournament that is, uh, uh, or a final that is obviously far more important. You look hmm. at the commentary, you look at the narrative around here from a media standpoint, it's all about Ashes. It's not about the India-Australia India, India Australia final. The, uh, it is there to a large extent, but not the way it should be. And broken yeah. record, yes that the Ashes actually supersedes everything is beginning to sound like a broken record here when there is a World Test Championship final being played. You know, you open the newspapers here, everything is about the Ashes. You <laughs> kind of talk to people here, everything is about the Ashes. So, yes, I mean, that, that, that is something which is... But that's because England is missing out, sad. no? So, England will, con will downplay this. The English yes. media will downplay it because the English are not in the final. I and mean, that just brings me exactly to, to exactly. that question. Does it have to be at a neutral venue? Does it have to yeah. be England every I every agree. time? Okay. I mean, listen, I'll we're come... talking about mid-June. Sorry, quickly, let me just yeah. quickly make this point. So, when they talk about uh, cricket being played this part of the year, listen, Southern India, we play cricket in June, July. In Sri Lanka, you play June, July. So, it's not necessarily that you have to play. If it's June, July, you have to play here in England. 
Yeah. No, I agree with you. I think that question will be looked at uh, as this World Championship goes on. But let me just quickly play out as I can't. I as I, we build up to the big match, which is starting tomorrow, and of course the playing eleven is in much uh, uh, question. I'll take that to our experts. But I also want to play out what uh, Shubman Gill, the man of the hour, has said. Remember, all eyes are on him because he's coming off his coaching form in the IPL. This is what he has told the ICC. It does give you a bit of confidence from the IPL, but I feel this is a completely different scenario and a completely different game. But that's the fun about it. Last week we were playing something completely different with a different atmosphere, and that is the challenge, and that is what is exciting about Test cricket. Of course, everybody would be hoping that this man comes good. If he does, some of our worries with Rohit Sharma's form, even to some extent Virat Kohli's form. Can be absorbed. We know what Chitesh Chita, Pujara can do. We know what Rane is capable of, especially uh, you know in this new avatar. So, Deep, I want to ask you. The other big question before this final is: Is it better off that India is coming off a grueling two months of IPL versus an Australia that have most of their players have barely played any cricket, or could Indians be more jaded because of that? Plus, you have to adjust from coming off T20 cricket to Test cricket, mm -hmm. and very quickly. Well, okay, so uh, I, I don't think there is any perfect uh, preparation for a, a, a final like this. Mm. Uh, but uh, ideally, you do you rather play some cricket than not play any cricket at all. So I do understand it's not ideal that you're coming off from a T20 uh, franchise cricket where you played uh, for different franchises, different sides. But at least you've been playing some cricket. And I completely agree with what Shubman mentioned. I mean, run under the belt is run under the belt, mm. uh, irrespective of which format you're playing. So at least you're hitting balls. And listen, for for uh, an undercooked side, bowling for the bowlers to get back into rhythm might be a, a comparatively easier thing. But for a batter, it's 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 a one ball game. Yeah. So if you haven't had uh, enough practice or enough match practice or game time, that can be an issue. So I rather have played some cricket, irrespective of the format, than play no cricket at all. Okay. Uh, on that note, very quickly, the what is your playing eleven going to be like? Oh my God! Okay, as as KSR mentioned, I completely agree. In England, uh, what you say is you look down, which mm. is the pitch, and then you look up at the skies, and then take a call. You just don't look at the pitch <laughs> only. Mm. So that's how it works here in England. So mm. as of now, I'm going to go with my twelve, and then tomorrow morning, uh, let's say half an hour before the toss, I'm going to look down, obviously, and then look up and decide whether I'm going to go with Ashwin and Jadeja. Or I'm going to go with four seamers because the other. And who's going to be the lone spinner? Jadeja. For Jadeja. Me. Jadeja. Uh, that's that's definitely there. Uh, and the other thing to weigh up is mm. you don't have your third seamer. For fourth seamer, you know it's going to be Shardul Thakur. Mm. But if it's three seamers, mm. you don't have a let's say a Bumrah. Obviously, then then you won't have even thought about it. But because your third seamer, you also have to weigh up. Let's say Ashwin and your third seamer, who brings more to the table. Mm. Uh, so that is also a, a cause of concern, I believe. So you don't have someone like a Bumrah or even Prasid Krishna, for that matter. You're looking at Umesh Yadav or uh, Jaydev Munatkar as your third seamer. Yeah, I ask, what is your take on this? You know, I mean, I, I agree with Deep that you have to look down and look up because, mm. and and as Shidini mentioned earlier, that you know the weather has become a little fickle. Uh, you know, and therefore things might change theoretically, or the mm. tactics might change. Mm. But I would still think India would play to their strength, which is five bowlers, six batsmen. That's what they've been doing, irrespective of the conditions over the last four or five years, and they've been doing it very successfully. Mm. To change things around, to just say I'll add another batsman might suggest a little apprehension, maybe unnecessary. And then the choice between two spinners and an extra fast bowler, I think, you know, these guys are are giving you strength with their bowling as well as by extending the batting depth. So I think I would go with both Ashwin and Jadeja, three fast bowlers. I would actually think that the third third choice of the fast bowler mm. after Shami and Siraj would be Unatkar because he brings in a different angle yeah. of delivery altogether. And he haven't played him much apart from what they've done, what they've seen of him in the IPL. So he could be a bit of a surprise element there. But that's yeah. You know, that's my take. Sorry. Yes, Deep, you wanted to come in. Shivani, can I quickly add one thing yeah. in favor of playing two spinners? Is also if you're looking at your second spinner being Ashwin, the off spinner, obviously his track record and everything else. Let's not forget the number of left-handers that Australia have. Mm -hmm. They are filled with left-handers, exactly. and maybe he exactly. might not. The spinners might not come into play day one, day two, but you 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 pick a team for all five days. So second innings. Uh, 
they might have a major role to play then. And the other big choice is between the wicket keepers, right? Ishan Kishan <laughs> or Bharat. Srini, any hints you're getting? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, no, no hints. Something is a team, but uh, what I feel is, personally is that going into a match as important as this and a one-off test match, not a series, I think you should go in with your best red ball keeper and that for me would be KS Bharat, not Ishan Kishan. And, uh, you know, I've been hearing all these stuff about getting a power hitter on board. I think we have enough power hitters to the order. If they can't hit, if they don't manage to hit, then I don't think we can do much about it. That said, I agree with the same thing when it comes to our bowling lineup. I don't think we should go in with the approach of, you know, going in with a bowler who can bat a bit low. I think, uh, you know, you, you play two spinners, I think you can easily bat until number seven, number eight. Uh, okay. Jadeja is in good form. Ashwin has shown us what he can do in test cricket. The top five batsmen are already there and KS Bharat can also bat. That said, we should go in with the seamers. And that's why if it comes to three seamers, I think Umesh Yadav goes in ahead of Shardul Thakur. Yes, I know Shardul Thakur yeah. scored two half centuries on this very um, ground the last time India played here. Mm. Uh, but uh, that mm. said, Umesh Yadav also had three wickets to show in each inning. So, it's a six-wicket haul in the match. And I think I'll still go ahead with Umesh Yadav. So, three okay. pacers, two spinners, mm. and a wicket keeper with uh, KS Bharat into the squad. That's it. That's I have only very limited time. I want to quickly play out what Steve Smith has said about concerns over test cricket. And I'll take a, a couple of reactions after that. Yeah, I am slightly concerned, but uh, yeah, hopefully um, Test cricket still s um, stays alive and well. I think it's in a good place at the moment. Um, you know, in terms of some of the gains we've seen recently, have been pretty amazing. So, um, yeah, for me, as a I suppose a traditionalist, someone that loves Test cricket, I, I hope it still remains at the the front of all the boards' um, mind and um, yeah, stays alive and well for, a, for some time to come. Right. Deep, is there a concern over Test cricket? I mean, we've been talking about the build-up for the Ashes, etc. Of course, that stands yeah. apart. But is there overall a concern, something that Steve Smith yeah. seems to be hinting at? Uh, I, definitely, yes. I, I think uh, in the future, we, it, this format might end up being a five-team or six-team format. Uh, I don't think it'll be 12 teams anymore and it does not make sense. I think for the long-term survival and sustainability of Test match cricket, I think it has to be, to a great extent, a five-six team. And secondly, just kind of thinking about what has uh, India winning an ICC trophy across formats meant. Mm. 83, India wins the 50 overs. We see the, the, the sea change in yeah. the cricket economy or the ecosystem. 2007, T20, whether it will work this format, won't work. India wins the ICC trophy or the World Cup and see where T20 is now. So I personally feel I think it will make from a very a holistic perspective or a, or, a, or a cricket as a sport perspective, India winning this WTC would definitely uh, help uh, the cause of test cricket as well. Okay, I have just about 30 seconds left. Ayaz, you want to add something before I give a final word to Srini as well? No, I, I think what Deep is saying is absolutely right. If India wins this, it'll give such it'll give a booster shot to Test cricket because there'll be so much more interest, especially in a country which follows it so passionately. Mm -hmm. I also subscribe to the view not necessarily happily that, you know, it's becoming more and more a club or a cluster of five or six teams mm. which are, you know, w playing cricket, test cricket, which seems worthwhile for the rest of the, for the rest of us and for the sport. Mm. But I think that's where the ICC and the cricket boards need to step in because unless you expand the horizons mm. of cricket, this cluster will get smaller and smaller and therefore it will hit test cricket very badly in the future if we don't do something about it now. Yeah. Srini, final word on this? Yes, uh, Chief, as far as test cricket is concerned, it's not going anywhere. Test cricket is here to stay, uh, come what may. It's about, you know, how people want to perceive it, uh, things about test cricket. Test cricket is not going away anywhere. What the ICC and the cricket boards need to realize is, look at the concept of the WTC, World Test Championship. Nine teams, uh, you know, take part in the WTC. Are nine teams playing the same number of matches? Are these nine teams playing the same number of series? Within the series, are these nine teams playing the same number of matches? You know, so how exactly is the point system allocated? I mean, I have no idea. Call any statistician on the show and ask him, how, do you understand how the point system for the WTC right, works? Right, right. Nobody will be able to explain it to you. How okay, it works. I'll try. That's complicated. I don't think anybody understands. And that is why one of the reasons we see is that the lesser privileged countries in Test cricket who want to play Test cricket are not really going anywhere with it. Okay, and fair enough. I've run out of time, but I think this danger. is an interesting debate. We'll try and take this forward as this big showcase of Test cricket happens. I do thank all of our guests for joining us. Too bad I'm not there, but they're all in England enjoying. But there's the other thing about context. 
two matches. And I think that's been spoken about quite a bit. And that context to your bilateral series is a question that is increasing, especially with what's happening to Test cricket. We look at those questions as this match progresses. Time for a very short break. On the other side, news and updates continue.